Corey Brazel, and this is Zachary Smith, and we're from BYU-Idaho, and we'd like to present our research on the Mohawkatino Formation. The purpose of this study was to understand the geologic history of the Mohawkatino Formation, as well as compare our results to results found by others who study this area. The Mohawkatino Formation is found within the Taranaki Basin near the North Island of New Zealand. Our sample location is located on the west coast along the beach west of Awakino, New Zealand. This area underwent ocean-ocean conversions, which led to Miocene volcanoes being produced within the basin along the west coast. Slope failure occurred, and turbidites reworked the basin, burying the edifices to these volcanoes. Evidence for the density flow associated with the turbidites is seen here in this picture of graded bedding, normally graded bedding. And our, uh, the area underwent uplift, which is why today the Mohawkatino Formation deposits can be found along the beach. Here is a picture of the Mohawkatino Formation deposits. Our samples were collected with M1 being on the bottom and M4 being on the top, with M2 and M3 being in the middle. Here are a picture of the hand samples collected. They're volcaniclastic in nature. We produced uh, thin sections from those hand samples to analyze the igneous minerals found within them. We found through a point count analysis that plagioclase and amphibole were the most abundant igneous minerals found in the samples. Plagioclase had uh, made 32% of the sample and Amphibol made 14% of the sample. Comparing our findings to a study conducted by Bergman and others with the Cora, uh, Cora well data, where they drilled through the Cora massif, they found that plagioclase was 46% abundant in their samples, and Amphibol was comparable to ours with 13%. And as Corey said, we, we saw these plagioclase and amphibole um, abundances, and we decided to perform a few analyses. Using an electron microprobe at BYU, we, we found the plagioclase compositions as well as amphibole. And here we have ternary diagrams of anorthite, albite, and orthoclase. And we have the core averages here, represented by pink and orange ovals. Core core would be the pink, and core rim would be the orange. We can see that there are many that fall inside of these averages, but there are a bunch that fall outside, which we'll talk about later. Amphibole compositions, we, we did the same thing with magnesium number within the amphiboles. We have these two core averages, and we can see there are some that fall inside of those averages, but there are quite a few that fall outside as well. We plotted a, a diagram for average magnesium number of the amphiboles compared to the average anorthite of the plagioclase. And as, as we should expect, we have a good trend here with increasing average magnesium number and average anorthite. But we do have this one outlier down here, which is our M3, which gave us reason to believe that there could have been alteration in the plagioclase due to low anorthite averages. So we took a look here at our M3 thin section looking for alteration in the plagioclase and we didn't, we didn't really see any alteration. And we, we took things a few steps farther. We wanted to see maybe the kind of environment that these uh, minerals may have formed in. Using the equation by Johnson and Rutherford of 1989, we, we wanted to see pressures. And this is using anorthite within plagioclase. And we found that the, the average for pressures was around 2.3 to 6.3 kilobars. And using, an, using another equation, we found that that was around 8 to 21 kilometers below the surface. Um, Holland and Blundy have an equation for finding temperatures, which was using both plagioclase and amphibole crystals. And we found that those averages came from 840 degrees to 945 degrees Celsius. And we'd just like to acknowledge that both of these equations were, are mainly for silicic materials, and we use these on andesitic materials. And the numbers we found are usually within the average of what we'd expect to see in andesitic materials, so we decided to, uh, to use these equations. 
Some conclusions we came to is that the most abundant minerals are plagioclase and amphiboles. The, the grains of the amphibole and plagioclase are not homogeneous, which we can see in this uh, diagram here. The composition of the igneous minerals, we, we found that they are similar to the Cora um, averages. We can see, as we were talking about earlier, they fall within the averages, but we do notice that there are many that fall outside of those averages. So we can't really say if it was the same volcanic event as the Cora or not. We, like we discussed earlier, we, we found that these plagioclase crystals, they form between 2.3 and 6.3 kilobars, which is around 8 to 21 kilometers below the Earth's surface, and they formed around 840 degrees to 945 degrees Celsius. And we came to the conclusion that the Mohawkatino formation is mostly andesitic material with some possible basaltic andesites thrown in there which we can see in this M4 sample with the high magnesium number and high anerthite, which is also backed up by our 21 uh, kilometers that have formed below the Earth's surface. Thank you. Thank you.